นโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตัสสะนโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตัสสะนโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตัสสะ Retreat series Dhamma Talk number thirty-three. <coughs> We are practicing Satipatthana Vipassana meditation, okay? Mindfulness and sight meditation, <coughs> and we follow strictly to the according to the long discourses of the Satipatthana Sutra. Delivered by the Buddha. So, if you remember this, a brief statement of this long discourses. Okay, even at the <coughs> beginner class, we have a handout for foundation of mindfulness. The Buddha said, "This is the only way, monks, <coughs> for the purifications of beings." To overcome sorrow and lamentation, to overcome pain and grief, to reach the path and the attainment of nibbana. That is the practice of full foundation of mindfulness, s a t i p a t t a n a vipassana. This is how the Buddha opens. Describe exactly the the benefits one can attain. And if you want to attain, this is the only way to observe full foundation of mindfulness. Whether you practice the pure vipassana or mixed vipassana, which means samatha vipassana. Whichever way, eventually one must observe the mind and matter at the present moment. <coughs> Without that, one would never attain enlightenment. And here, in monks, when you practice, a monk <coughs> practicing or dwelling, yeah, observing the. Nama and Rupa. The way the Buddhists had in there is, you dwell and practice ardently, okay? clearly comprehending and mindful. That's how one must observe. That is the whole thing of how to practice. Okay? Ardently, clearly comprehending and mindful. What do you do? You observe the body physicality. You observe the feelings vedana, and you observe the mind c h i t t a and you observe the dharma objects. <coughs> dharma. How do you observe? Ardently, clearly comprehending, being mindful. That's the key words. So those three words in Pali is a d a p i s a m p a j a n y a s a t i m a a d a p i s a m p a j a n y a s a t i m a That's what it is. Urgently, clearly comprehending, being mindful. <coughs> That those three words cover everything how to practice. And last week. In the last Dhamma talk, we went through in details about the meaning of those three words, focusing especially on the clearly comprehending or clear comprehension, s a m p a j a n y a So one must practice this mindfulness and sight meditation with urgent effort, not an ordinary effort. And also, 
one must be being mindful okay, with the precise okay, awareness, precise observation. Being mindful must be with the object at the present moment with precision. And also another word being mindful is called bear attention. Bear attention. How do you observe? You observe it thoroughly, completely, penetratively, closely, <coughs> and deeply, and clearly comprehending. You must have a clear comprehension of the objects, which are both physical and mental. One must understand thoroughly. And if you do that, then you are practicing this mindfulness insight meditation. One must observe with urgent effort at the present moment on the object that is arising, whatever that it is, with great precise sharp awareness and understand the nature of the mind and matter in its true form. So in here, Sampajanya, the Buddha keep on explaining for us to understand there are four kinds of Sampajanya, four kinds of clear comprehension. The first one is called Sataka Sampajanya, Sataka Sampajanya. <coughs> clear comprehension of beneficiality, sataka, sambhajanya. Second one is sapaya, sambhajanya, clear comprehension of suitability. And the third one is gosara, sambhajanya, clear comprehension of domain. And the fourth one is Asamoha Sambhajanya, clear comprehension of non-delusion. So there are four types of clear comprehension. And what are these four types? We see one is beneficiality, second is suitability, that one is domain, and the fourth one is non-delusion. So we need to know these four types of clear comprehension. <coughs> and again here, whenever Buddha is taught, okay, whether he is talking about the one single moment of a consciousness, which is about hundred of billion of a second. That's a moment. A consciousness arises and passed away. Hundreds of billions of a second. That fast. Or whether Buddha is talking about just this one hour sitting down and talking together on a topic. Or whether Buddha is talking about your life for a few years or for your whole life from the birth to death. Or for that matter, for many lives, past, present and future. These are the time zone. Basically, it's a time. Okay. 100 billion of a second to eons and eons of lives. Whichever level, whichever time duration you apply, whatever the Buddha talks, the same thing <coughs> applies to any and every level. You can apply to that fraction of a second to eons of life. And if Buddha has stated the nature of the Dharma, that can be applied to all level. 
that you will find it true. The more you practice, the more you study, the more you read, you will find it. It is true at all times, at any time of duration. So that's why Buddhist Dharma are applicable to everybody. They can pick it up and use it okay, as they need, as they required at the moment of that life. <clears throat> it is through time tested, space tested, throughout time and space. His teachings are applicable, verifiable, and provable. So that is one aspect one need to know. So in here, do we call it Sampajanya, clear comprehension? This clear comprehension is just little one noting. Forget about 100 billion of a second. We can't reach to that level. Only the Buddha can reach it. We just observe it. Okay. Rising, falling, rising, falling. Which is, let's say about one-tenth of a second or a quarter of a second. That's all that it lasts, the beginning to the end. And whatever you observe and you learn and you experience on that, that experience you can go and apply in any part of your life, any aspect of your life, any project, any cause, you'll find that it is true and correct. Okay, so. That is one aspect we should keep in mind. So don't think, oh, what about this? Just a fraction of a second. How is that relevant to my life? Those kind of questions arises from some yogis. So before that thought arises, I'd like to explain ahead. It is applicable at any time, under any circumstances. So same thing you observed urgently, okay. mindfully, and understanding clearly on a fraction of a second. That is Sambhajanya, thorough, complete, and total. Or you might be just meditating for an hour, or you might be meditating for six months retreat, a year retreat, or you might not be even meditating, but you keep it as a lifestyle and keep it along with your life. This Sampajana is applicable and useful. First of all is Sataka Sampajana, clear comprehension of beneficiality. So whatever you do and you say whatever action you take, as soon as you hear the word actions, we need to understand with clarity physical action, verbal action, and mental actions. You can apply at any level, physical, verbal, or even on a mental level. So when we say action, these three activities are involved. So whatever actions you are taking, one must understand thoroughly before you take the action what kind of benefit, what kind of result will it produce. In other words, giving a warning to be aware of all your actions before you do. Will it hurt somebody? Will it harm somebody? Or will it benefit somebody? Or it won't benefit anybody and it will be simply wasted. These are the things. So that's why one must be always aware, clearly understand, and know what kind of benefit will it produce if you are going to take that action. That's the first one. And if you totally understand what is going to happen or produce, what kind of result it will produce, then you have this sataka sambhajanya, clear comprehension of 
beneficiality. That's number one, sampajanya. Whether you are taking on a major project that will last for five years, that applies. Whether you are going to get married to someone, that applies. Okay? Or whether you are going to march on a protest for a day, for an hour, that applies. Or even just here, okay? what do I do at this moment? My bladder is full. How full it is? Okay. Do I go to the washroom? Or can I hold it on for an hour? There's a decision making. And when that decision making comes, you have to know exactly what is beneficial. So everywhere, every situation, every instances, every moment, we are always taking some actions, physical, verbal, or mental, and we must be aware what kind of result it will produce. Should be beneficial. As soon as we say beneficial, there is another thing one need to understand. Beneficial to all others, including yourself. You are not left out. It must be beneficial for others. It must be beneficial for yourself as well. You are included in all. <clears throat> Until and unless you purposely decided to sacrifice yourself for others, and even that, you thoroughly think and understand about it. No cause and effect and everything. You have a, a measured, informed decision. And then you take it. You sacrifice yourself for others. That is your personal choice. But in general, it must be beneficial for all, including yourself. That's beneficiality. Let's say, under our retreat uh, meditation setting, going to retreat. Yeah, great. I'll come here, and then once a month, we have a three days or four days retreat. If I go there, will it be beneficial? I have no experience yet. I have some experience yet. No experience. That will be great. I'll see what the experience is. Oh, I have been going for about last two years already. Well, I should better cut it down. Stop it. Ask it. And if you're going to stop it, ask another question. The thing is, why is the phrase called practice make perfect. Practice make perfect means do something that is good again and again and again. And if you do that, you will reach to perfection. And if you think that way, by you stopping to go to those monthly retreats, you are blocking yourself from the progress to the path of perfection. These are the kind of things. Or should I go to three months retreat? And in three months retreat, you will experience things that you had never experienced before if you follow exactly. That is, in terms of our meditation setting, how to think about beneficiality. So, in other words, just for observing one moment or whether you are taking on a project that will last for five years, the same thing. It is applicable at any level, at any time, but use that one. Second one is sapaya sampajanya. Sapaya is called suitability. You must clearly understand any actions you are going to do, whether that is suitable and appropriate or not. Suitability. So let's say suitability. In life example, you can take 
many things, many people can think. So let's take the more of a meditation setting. So you go to retreat. You go to retreat and then you are meditating. Let's say you only go there for 10 days retreat. 10 days retreat, we just say, you must sit cross-legged, back straight, neck straight, don't move. Okay, that's an instruction. So if you follow that instruction, that's very beneficial. But at the same time, you recently uh, have an accident, fall down, and there's a back injury. If you have a back injury and if you are going to follow the instruction exactly, is it suitable and appropriate for your long-term health? Because of that, it, you might permanently damage your spine. That kind of decision-making is there. So you don't do anything blindly. But at the same time, to be appropriate, you are meditating under a setting, under a guide, under a teacher. You just simply don't go and do anything the way you want it. It's just simple communication. Go to the teacher and say, I had a back problem, this and this and that. So may I take it or how should I sit? That kind of a thing. It is the proper due respect. There should be a respect from the students to the teacher. And also there should be a respect from the teacher towards the students. It's a mutual respect, not one way. And if we observe these things, that is something suitable you are doing, even though it is opposite to what the instruction is. <coughs> Let's say you're walking, doing a walking meditation. Walking meditation is you just go look straight, no left, right, up and down. And even straight is about six feet in front of you. Must not change any direction. So that is the instruction, and you're following it. You're following it, but if somebody comes and stood beside you, across from you, that means somebody is trying to get the attention. At that moment, the situation is different. Even though instruction is, you must look only six feet in front of you, nothing anywhere. At that moment, you may lift your eyes and you may look at the person so that you can understand the communication. It could be a verbal communication, it could be a physical intimation. That's what I mean by suitability. You don't blindly follow, but at the same time, your execution should be with appropriateness. That is, sapaya, sampajanya, clear compression, comprehension of suitability. You must understand it clearly, exactly what you are doing, why you are doing, how you are doing. That is the <coughs> second type of sampajanya, clear comprehension. Clear comprehension or understanding, or knowing clearly and correctly. That is Sampajanya. So the third one is Gosara Sampajanya. So it's called clear comprehension of domain. So what is domain? Domain is, let's see, a herd of cattle. Okay. Summertime, it is just driven in into a, a grassland or the grassland. That grassland, they go there, they live there, they eat there, they roam about. And that is their domain because that is what is beneficial for them, that is what is suitable for them. And if they live within that domain, within that area, within that region, safe and sound, and there's a lot of nutrition, food. That's where it is. That's what domain is. A place 
where one dwells in harmony with the environment which supply your basic important needs and one can grow so that's the domain so as it is a domain for the yogi the yogis do they have a domain kosara mean domains kosara sabjana so one must understand what is the domain that one must live for the yogis in one words is meditation in one word meditation is your domain and again one need to understand if we practice this method as soon as you say meditation it doesn't only for sitting sitting is a meditation walking is a meditation running is a meditation taking a shower is a meditation everything what you do can be in the mode of meditation so mindfulness inside when we say meditation don't think only about cross legged sitting mindfulness being aware of what of everything mindfulness of being everything vipassana insight what are you supposed to be aware of you are aware of everything whatever is happening in you around you in relation to you everyone must be aware in general of course we say all minds and matter materiality and physicality that's one way of putting it that is being aware being mindful you are in meditation mind and matter but let's approach different way so that you have a thorough understanding where are these objects <clears throat> materiality and mentalities are occurring <clears throat> it occurs at your sixth sense door it occurs at your eye door things that you see things that you hear ear door things that you smell nose door things that you taste tongue door things that are in touch with your physical body the body door five physical doors and there is one more door it's a mind door six doors everything all these nama and rupas are happening in one of the six door at all time so in other words as long as the yogi is aware of the six sense door whichever door somebody is knocking something is knocking on that door be aware right on the spot of that door aware of these six doors if you are aware of the six sense door whichever whatever is knocking on either one of the door then you are in a state of meditation there are many ways many approach some approach us more effective for some people and some are for others be aware of the six sense door and watch all the time that is you are in a state of meditation you are in the domain that is the domain meditation is a domain that is the domain of a yogi that is the domain of a meditator let's approach another way what is the domain of a meditator be aware be mindful be observant anything that is happening in your standing posture be 
aware, be mindful, be observant of anything that is happening in your sitting posture. And then on the walking posture and the fourth and the final in the lying down posture. There are only four postures that we can take, whether we sit or we stand, or we walk or we lie down. And if you observe all these four postures, you cover every aspect of yourself. So be observant, be mindful, be in a meditation mode in all full postures. That's one way. Which one do you want to take? Or do you want a combination of it? Whichever works for you. That one, the teacher don't know. That one, you know which is more effective for you. Which produce more result. Which keeps you really close with the meditation. Those are the one you need to practice exercise and find out for yourself. But if you are aware of the full posture, if you are aware of the all six sense door, if you are aware of any physical and mental object that is arising at the moment, then you are always in the domain of a meditator. You are never out of domain. And for a meditator, one must not be out of the domain of a meditation. And what is this meditation? It is mindfulness insight or full foundation of mindfulness. You can be talking and you are aware. You can even be whistling, you are aware. You might be humming a song, you are aware. You are not shutting down anything. You are doing things appropriately at a situation, at a moment, at a condition. But simply be aware and be aware and be aware. Be mindful, be mindful, be mindful. All activities, all actions and movements can be put under a meditation mode in this kind of a meditation. And if you live like that, if you try to live like that, of course we try our best, you are in the domain of a meditator, kosara sampajanya. You have a clear comprehension of the domain. You understand the area the domain where you need to be and you are always in it. So there you are, three. One is, number one is what? Beneficiality, clear comprehension, understanding what is beneficial, not beneficial. Second one is what is suitable and appropriate. And the third one is you keep yourself in the domain at all times the best that you can. Of course, we can say that do this, do this, do this, do this. But when you actually do it, it's not that easy. You slip away, <clears throat> you miss a lot, you hit and you miss. That's what it is. Especially if you're a beginner. And even if you are not a beginner, if you are not so serious and respectful to the practice, we have already talked about what serious and respectful means. In other words, this okay, lifestyle or this being mindful, you have to make it it's an important part of your lifestyle. Important, not a secondary important part. And to be able to keep as something important aspect of your life, you must really know its benefits. Not just reading about 50 words or 20 words. Understand that 50 words, each and every word, 
deeply and thoroughly in relation to your life, to your incident, to your actions. And when you put the word, each word, to your life experience, and if they gel, then you will totally feel differently. The other one is just intellectual understanding, but this understanding is very deep. Your life experience directly towards the words being taught or what to do. When you see them, they are the duplicate nature. You feel differently. Once you feel differently, you act differently. So in here, not easy to do. As it is not easy to do, that's why in this meditation method, we call this method in the West a slow method, or some call it by the teacher who make it popular, Mahasi method. Mahasi is a monk who is about in the 1950s become quite popular and spread this particular method or technique around the world. He made this popular. It's called, it's focused on the movement, start with. To start with, focus on the movement, but it is not only the movement. Movement is simply the first part. The reason is, it gives you a focus to the rising and falling movement of the abdomen, or maybe rising, falling, sitting, touching, as much as that, and also walking, lifting, pushing, dropping, and so on. No need to go into details. And also being aware of all the activities, whether eating or showering or whatever you may be doing throughout the day. And if you look at it, it's only a handful, maybe six, or maybe ten, a small number. But the precise instruction is one must be aware of everything, whatever it may be arising at this present moment. And that is the numbers you can go into infinity. And if you go dive into it right from the beginning, you won't because you won't be able to how to handle it, how to make it work properly. So that's why we start with a small number, a handful, two or six or ten, and then we observe and we observe repeatedly again and again and again. And why do we do? Because we are not skillful yet, so we start dealing with a small group again and again. With a small group, when you're observing, what are you doing? Go back to the phrase, atapi sampajanya satima, urgently. Okay. You are putting urgent effort. When you're observing that small group, you must not lax. You put urgent effort so that you won't miss anything beginning to the end, beginning to the end, beginning to the end. There's small groups of four or five objects. And then being mindful. Being mindful means you know the object from the beginning, from the middle, and to the end. And also you know the object clearly, thoroughly, and precisely with time. And clearly comprehending as you start to understand its true nature. So what are you doing at that moment? Forget about the clear understanding. Clear understanding or clear comprehension or wisdom, another word, that comes. So let's leave it out. The first two thing is artapi, urgent effort, and satima, being mindful. These two. What are you doing these two by repeating again and again and again? At the beginning, you are putting effort. 
you're observing, you're mindful, but your mindfulness is ordinary. Ordinary mindfulness. We all start with ordinary mindfulness. And this ordinary mindfulness, you do it again and again and again, persistently, without fail, with respect, with seriousness, with slowing down all activities. When you slow down, you can see. And by doing so, what is the result you are expecting? You are making those two mental states. Earth and effort. Let's simply say effort. Effort is varia, if you remember the word. The other one is being mindful, that is sati. This varia and sati, effort and mindfulness, we are making them from the ordinary type into the powerful and strong type. This varia become bala varia, strong, powerful, and firm effort. This ordinary sati become sati bala, strong, powerful, and firm mindfulness. We have to upgrade those two mental qualities to the ordinary, to the strong and powerful quality. It's called bala. That's what we are doing. You must do it. One needs it. Without those two mental states going to the strong point, you will see nothing. You will understand nothing. You will comprehend nothing. Intellectually, through the books, through the lectures, you understand. We are not talking about that. We are talking about experiential understanding and comprehension. With those two, those two mental state uplifted and upgraded to the powerful level, bala, sati bala, uriya bala, you can't go any farther on any understanding. That's the reason we always start with small and slow and only a few. And when you have that powerful state, it comes again and again and again. What happened was you began to see these objects clearer and clearer and clearer. Some of you have gone through the experience, some are maybe at the right at the border. You're observing this rising movement, rising, rising, rising. You know. But when it becomes powerful, you know in such a way you are not aware of any other thing except that. That little rising movement is your universe. That's it. That is what it's mean by with you know with clarity. If you are aware of that movement and if you are aware of many other things around that time, that means you are overlapping and you don't have clarity yet. Yes, you do have sati, you do have mindfulness, but you have no clarity. That bala, powerful and strong state, brings you clarity. And then you observe and you observe, and clarity becomes sharper and sharper and sharper. When it becomes sharper, then you really understand the object that you are observing. Let's see rising movement. You know the rising movement, but the way you know now and the way you know at that point is entirely different. You will experience yourself. This is not a, a storyline telling. It is the practical aspect of it. And that understanding is you are going into the field of clear comprehension. Understanding or wisdom, sampajanya. That kind of understanding you started to understand. And when you observe it very clearly and very sharply, at one moment, what happened is the object, the occurrence of the object 
and your observation. It's totally precise in terms of time and space. Totally precise. And if you have the precision, your observation, knowing, and the occurrence or event of the object you are observing, at that moment, what happens is automatically, you don't have to see that, you see that object by itself. Nothing to do with you. There's a movement. You know the movement with clarity and sharpness, and that movement is totally disconnect to you, unconnected to you. Of course, right now, thing it is my stomach moving, but at that moment, you know that it is totally, simply a movement, a phenomena, a process happening on its own. And then there is another process, simply a knowing. Two, it's split into two, that one little observation. So this is rising and falling movement. But in general, I'll give you a, something there. Uh, you're sitting on a chair reading a book, and suddenly, mm, okay, I've been sit, sitting long enough. I want to go for a walk. And then you get up and you walk. And if you are mindful, at that moment you simply know wanting to go. Or we say, I want to go. That wanting to go is the nama or consciousness or mental phenomenon. You see it by itself. Wanting to go is the consciousness or mental phenomenon. And getting up and go, the manner, the way the body moves, lean forward, strike, left, right, left, right, that going is the physical phenomenon. Wanting to go is the nama, consciousness. The manner, the way of the movement of going is the physical phenomenon. You see them two exactly two phenomenons and operation. That's it. There is no liking, there is no dislike. You simply see this nama and rupa, nama rupa, consciousness and the body, or mental phenomenon and physical phenomenon. In all your actions and movement, you see these things. That is when your observation is in precision with the actuality of the events that is occurring. And that will become more and more and more and more. You will see in all your daily activities that physical phenomenon and mental phenomenon, two pairs, unconnected, always in operation, always in preparation, and you are aware, you are aware, you are aware, you are aware. And when you are aware, so what's a big deal about it? It is always happening now aware, what's a big deal about it? The big deal about it is if you are aware in that a pair of phenomena and operation in your activities, at that moment you have no mental defilements. Mental defilements, if you remember it, loba, dosa, and moha. Crudely translated, greed, anger, and delusion. You are free from mental defilements. When you ever you are aware, these two physical and mental phenomena are operation in your activities through your powerful observation of mindfulness and a great effort. You are free from mental defilements. When you are free from mental defilements, what happens is your concentration is built up enormously. When there is a concentration, there is no mental defilements. Vice versa, if there is no mental defilements, you can say there is concentration. 
and concentration. If you remember correctly, it's like a magnifying glass. Like a magnifying glass. Anything, any object you are observing, you see it in such a details, explicit details, from many different angles in various ways. That's a way how you see because of that concentration. No kilesa, mental defilement. Concentration is powerful and you see these nama and rupa in a detailed way. What happened is, the way it is, is you begin to see this is the physicality, this is mentality. And also you see this is the intention, mentality. Because of the intention, there's a movement, the physicality happened. The relationship with physicality and mentality through causal relationship, vice versa, up and down. Because of mind, the body moves. Because of the body, the mind has to move. Because of the mind, the mind has to act. And so on and so on. You see these things clearly. And these clarity are not through intellectual thinking. You simply know through experience. That is clear comprehension. And then you see them. Not only that you see them, the more and the more you practice, what is happening is you started to see them the moment the object arises and the moment the object passed away. You're starting to know the moment the awareness arises and the moment the awareness passed away. In other words, you know they are arising and passing away, arising and passing away quite sharply. Now I'm expanding the whole spectrum, sitting meditation, walking meditation, daily activities. In every aspect, you begin to see these kind of arising and passing away. And first and foremost, of course, you will see the dualism. Both physicality and mentality arises and passed away. Ah, great, you feel pretty good, you feel satisfied. So, but before that, you only see the physicality. Physical object arises and pass away. Physical object arises and pass away. You see or you understand, you comprehend. Your body is always arising and passing away. And then slowly and slowly, that physicality is paired with mentality. Physicality and mentality arises and pass away, arises and pass away. Eventually, you see all your mental state, the mind, separately without pairing with physicality, the mind arises and pass away, or mind arises and pass away. You see them with clarity and sharpness. Why? Because of the concentration power. So that's a very brief statement of what you will be experiencing just from the three little words, ardent, clearly comprehending, and being mindful. And that way of understanding of the physicality and mentality is called asamoha sambhajanya, clear comprehension of non-delusion. Clear comprehension of non-delusion. That is how you come to understand. Again, when you practice and when you become skillful, it's pervasive. In sitting meditation, moment to moment, split second, you know. In walking to meditation, you know. In your daily activities, you know. Those are the four types of sambhajanya. Clear comprehension of beneficiality, suitability, clear comprehension of domain, and clear 
comprehension of non-delusion. So that is called sampajanya. So may all of you be able to practice and finally reach to the state of this full clear comprehension and may you be free and liberated from all mental defilements and attain enlightenment as soon as possible. Sadhu, 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 Buddham, Bujemi. Dhammam Bujemi. Sangam Bujemi. Thank you very much.